Hey guys, this is Tato Leong, and in this video, you will see 10 misconceptions that you should know. Is it easier to hook an oversized hero like Underlord? No, hero model does not affect any landing of skill shots, blocking off creeps and heroes, and squeezing through narrow terrains or trees. Collision size is the factor of all of this. Not every hero has the same collision size and I'll prove it to you with Nature's Prophet. When you cast Sprout, only one target get trapped in the Sprout because of the collision size. If the target has face boots on, the target will remain in the trees, but it'll get pushed out when the face boots buffs end. There are 4 heroes with severely lower collision size than the rest and they can get trapped in the sprout with you. They are Lycan, Naga, Phantom Lancer, and Monkey King. Let's run another test. I'll place Monkey on this pointy spot, lean punch against the edge, and hook towards the tree. Now I'll have the X on the same spot, lean patch against the edge, and hook towards the tree. Bad Rider's Flame Break does not push you 300 distance away from the Flame Break. Instead, it pushes you 300 distance away from the original spot of where you are standing. So casting Flame Break further or closer to your target doesn't actually do anything. But the direction of the Flame Break is the one that actually matters. It is stated that Chakra Magic reduces the cooldown of all abilities currently on cooldown by a fixed amount, but this is not true. Chakra Magic does not reduce the cooldown of ultimate abilities. Every time you get ruptured, you TP out and you laugh at the Bloodseeker for not having any stuns. Sometimes, for efficiency purposes, you TP to a safer location and continue farming. TPing out of Rupture does not guarantee you taking zero damage. In order for you to take no damage, you need to blink or teleport out of more than 1300 range away, or you will still take damage. A max range blink dagger will not be able to avoid the damage. A max range Quap of Pain blink will not be able to avoid the damage as well. Roots may stop heroes from getting away, but it does not interrupt all channeling. You can cancel TP with Roots, but you cannot cancel any spell channeling with Roots. There are three main damage in Dota 2, Physical, Magical, and Pure. Physical gets amplified and reduced by armor. Magical gets amplified and reduced by magical resistance. Pure ignores armor and magic resistance, which means no damage reduction or amplification, right? Wrong. Pure damage can still be amplified by spell amplification. In fact, almost all ability damage and item spell damage can be amplified by spell amplification, except for summons. And also, pure damage does not mean pure spell immunity. You have to check the description for it. There are certain situations where you want to hold a creep wave at a certain spot so you feel safe to farm. But in most cases, you don't want to do this. If you want to win your lane, you need to push them out. 
secure level advantage, then beat the enemy out of the lane with the creep advantage. If you want to win the lane passively, you want to push out the lane, then get off the pulse. If you want to make a gang happen, you need to push out the lane and force a reaction so that the gang goes smoothly. Maintaining creep equilibrium might not be the safest play because you'll be sitting in lane at the same location for a long period of time and it is much easier for someone to gank you. Manta dodging coil is not the most consistent and reliable way to play against park coil. Although you can manta dodge the break, sometimes you will need some luck, even if you do it perfectly. And in a very chaotic game, it is very hard to time it perfectly without any guidelines. But when you have a four staff with a manta, you can consistently get out of the coil as long as you force yourself near the edge of the coil. So when you're playing a ranged carry, you can consider this item build against Park. When you purchase Shard on Ember, you get a mini flame guard on your remnant, and every time an enemy hero dies, you get a remnant charge back. Well, that's what it says, and that's what we thought. When Ember Spirit die with a shard, a remnant will spawn on the death spot, so you can always buy back and fly back into the battle. No matter how you get displaced during the death of Aegis, the respawning is always at the original death spot despite the graphics showing you otherwise. Shout out to all general members for your generosity. Thank you for watching the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and see you next time. Nice, nice. Sí, sí.